Hello guys, welcome to Pokedex, the channel where I build decks for the Pokemon trading card game. Today we're not building decks, we're looking at the spoilers for Roaring Skies, the new set that's coming out this month. Um, before we start, big shout out to Pokebeach.com, pretty amazing site as you guys know, please check them out, best uh, site for uh, Pokemon news. They always have the spoilers for the new sets ahead of time, so if you guys like the Pokemon trading card game and all things related to Pokemon, I think you guys should check it out for sure. So this time I'm not going to be looking at every single card like I did last time because I was looking at the set for the first time. Now I, I'm not. I already saw what cards I want to talk about. So hopefully we go through them quicker. And then at the end, I can give you guys uh, my opinions on what the format is going to be. Does that sound cool? Okay, let's start. But before we start looking at the cards, just a quick um, something I have to say about the set. And it's actually about the set's art. I really like most of the, the card drawings. I think there's some pretty amazing uh, cards like this ninja-esque look at this drawing. I love this kind of um, stylized uh, child book drawing, you know. And it's way, way better than, I don't know, look at the EXs, <laughs> the 3D effect, oh my god, I'm so cool, this uh, this looks really ugly to me, I hate the 3D they use on the EXs, I'd much rather have them use, look at the Execute, look how cute this is, uh, it even tells a story, like you have the Execute being attacked by the Spiro, and then you have the Executor <laughs> taking care of all the Spiros, so that's pretty cool, I, big shout out to to the art uh, to the guys that do the art on the on the set. I'd rather have the EXs have look more like the the garbage Pokemon, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, let's start looking at the cards. We start with Ninjask. Um, a lot of people were um, when they saw the Japanese spoilers were happy with this card. Thought it was going to be cool. Wing Buzz reads, once during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do discard the top card of your opponent's deck, it does seem cool, right? You discard an Execute and they and you mill your opponent's card from the top of the deck, but this Pokemon has, has to be in the active position. And that's what, that's what I think kills this dude. Um, I was... I actually, when I read the card for the first time in the Japanese spoilers, I didn't notice the active uh, Pokemon line, so I thought you could do this with a guy on the bench, so I thought you could just hide behind the wall, like a Waylord or a Safeguard Pokemon, and just mill your opponent over and over again, and it doesn't seem to be the case, so uh, this guy doesn't seem to be good. I don't know why they nerfed the milling strategies that much, especially since we have the Lysander Trump card in the format, so maybe sometimes they would get lucky and get the VS Seekers into the discard pile as well, but uh, that doesn't seem like uh, it would break anything, so I'm kind of sad that this doesn't really work. Then we have Shatinja. Uh, it's a stage 1, it evolves from the Ninkada as well. It has 30 HP and it has Opal Scream, which deals 50 damage times the number of, energy, uh, of damage counters on this Pokémon for just a single colorless energy. That's pretty cool, right? Um, if you have a Mew EX attacking and copying Shatinja's attack, if Mew EX has taken 4 damage counters, so 40 damage, can use Opal Scream, potentially for no energy because you have the Stadium, and deal 200 damage to their opponent's Pokémon, so that's that's pretty amazing, I guess. I think I see Shedinja being played in, I don't know, even in Nightmare's deck, in decks with uh, Mew EX. Um, any deck with Mew EX seems good to be a, a place where you use Shedinja. Uh, in Nightmare's decks it can play the role where if the, the, the opponent plays the... Um, the uh, what's the name of the the Lies and the Storm card I just mentioned it, and you have to shuffle everything back. At least you have Shadinja in there, and you can actually do some damage. So I think that's pretty cool. Another pretty cool card, support card is Articuno. I think uh, I see this being played as a two-off or something in the Kyogre decks because it's a basic Pokemon and it's an Onyx and it finds Water Energy, which sometimes is all you want with that deck. It's uh, it's a setup Pokemon for the deck. I, I think that I kind of need that, needed that. I When I started building it, I started with um, mana fees and all that, but they didn't really work. Uh, now, Articuno, I think it's pretty cool. It cannot actually hit for 100 damage. If you're using double colorless energy, I guess that's cool if you move to energy on the Articuno. And then you have a non EX attacker, especially if the opponent cannot one it KO it, because then you it takes two turns to kill a non EX, and that's pretty cool. And it deals 100 damage. So it will indeed knock out with two hits pretty much anything. 
so yeah, but basically for fine dice, I think uh, this card is worth it. Uh, there's also another Articuno in here, which has the Delta Plus uh, Ancient Trait, which means it's basically Lugia's ability. So if the opponent knocks, if you knock out the opponent's Pokémon, sorry, you take an extra prize. That's pretty cool, but all the Pokémon that have it are kind of underwhelming, and that's probably for the best. Uh, Triedge has the potential to fail even, so mm, it's three coins, so most likely it will hit, but... Oh no, I read it wrong. Yeah, it does always does 20 damage, so okay. It's a little better. It, the, the flips are to increase the damage. Okay, so they, it's not all the damage. Okay, so at least you deal 20. So if the opponent's Pokémon is really close to dying and you have 3 energy on Articuno, I guess you can do that. Uh, doesn't seem great. It's 3 energy, but oh well. Uh, what else? What else? Where else do we have? Okay, so the first EX Pokémon, Thunderous EX. Headlock doesn't seem that great, to be honest. Uh, anything, uh, all, everything about Thunderous EX uh, doesn't seem great. Um, or nothing seems great, sorry, <laughs> my English. Uh, Edlock does 30, and then you flip a coin's coin. If it's heads, you deal 30 more, so it's 60. And if it tells you, paralyze your opponent's Pokemon. Both are good effects, but the fact that sometimes you will really need a 60 damage to knock them out, and other times you really need the, paral the paralysis, and you don't really choose, it's the coin that chooses for you, and uh, even if it's dealing 60 damage for two energy, I don't think that's great. Um, it's like a stepping stone in that in the next turn you play the third energy and you Voltage Rush, but even then, Voltage Rush is not that great. It's 150, okay, that's wonderful for three energy, but you do 50 damage to yourself, so... <sighs> Suddenly Thunderous will be at 120, so it's in range for pretty much anything. You can see it being played as a one-off in Manetric decks, but it has the same weakness and resistance, so I don't really know why you... And it has, even has a extra retreat cost, so yeah, I think you should better stick with Manetrix and just leave Thunderous CX alone, unless you're a real fan of Thunderous. You have another Pokémon with uh, Delta Plus uh, Ancient Trait, but this one even does less damage, but at least you can charge it up faster, potentially with only one energy, so Nato may be a finisher in some kind of deck, where you just leave your opponent's Pokémon with 10 HP and then you take two prizes, I don't know, doesn't seem that solid. There's a Banette here, which has an ability which is pretty interesting. Tool Concealment means that tools have no effect. So this means Muscle Bands, Heart Charms, Float Stones, uh, Spirit Links, and Team Flare tools. So seems pretty cool, but it's a stage one, and I don't think you really want to do all that just to get rid of the tools. Maybe just play Zerosic and get rid of them in the old-fashioned way. I don't know. This Banette uh, seems like it's... Okay, it has Delta Evolution, which means you can evolve on the same turn that you play the basic, but it doesn't seem that worth it, because Evolution Jammer, the opponent can't evolve the... Well... Oh, okay, your opponent can't play any Pokémon from his or her hand to evolve his or... Oh, so it's any Pokémon! Oh, okay, so that's actually better than I thought. I thought it was only the defending Pokémon. I read this card wrong. Okay. Actually, yeah, maybe this can play some role, I don't know. Still have a hard time uh, seeing that, um, but it does stop all evolutions, so the opponent has to get rid of it somehow. I don't know, if the opponent has the deck that can't really attack unless it's with evolutions, I guess Evolution Jammer can be good. We have Deoxys in here, it's a uh, non-EX Deoxys, and this one is actually pretty cool, I like this card a lot. Close Encounter, if you go first you can use it, and even if you don't go first, I think you can use it, I hope so, I, I hope that's what this means. Uh, let's assume it is, and you draw two, two cards for just a single colorless energy, so potentially you don't even drop energy on the Oxys, you just play the Stadium, you draw two cards, pretty good setup Pokémon. Um, Overdrive Smash is not that great, I mean, it does 30 and then 90 every single uh, following turn, but I don't think that's where you want to be, maybe sometimes you have to, but I see this being played in Wobbuffet Bats decks, I actually think this makes that deck a lot better, just because you set up so well with the Oxys, uh, you don't even need to drop energy there, you, just, you can just play it on the Wobbuffets, and then you set up, and that's one of the things that I thought were kind of lame with that deck, is that you took so long to set up, and you have to have some damage spread out before Wobbuffet actually does anything, so maybe you draw you, the, all the bats and then deal damage. We have Galady X in here, I don't think it's really that good, Swift Lounge the 30 and forces the opponent to switch, uh, and then piercing prizes does 20 more damage for each of your remaining prize cards, so it means you're dealing 170 when you have all the prizes. 
it's pretty good in the early game, not that great in the late game, because every time you kill something, you're dealing less damage. And the fact that the attack costs so many en energy, and it's not even callless energy, so you can't cut them with a stadium, so this kind of sucks. I don't think this guy is great. Um, you have to take three turns, because there's no real acceleration on Gallade for psychic energy, so yeah. Uh, Mega Gallade, uh, though, has a pretty interesting attack. Uh, Unwavering Blade does 110. If you have the Stadium down, it's kind of the same that the Mega Manetric does. And it does 30 damage to each of the opponent's benched Pokémon that have damage counters on it. So if you're building around Mega Galade X, I guess you have to do damage to the bench. Otherwise, this is just uh, strictly worse than Me Mega Manetric. So I guess if you're building a deck around it, de dealing damage, I don't know, with bats or something to the opponent's bench is going to be key part of your strategy. But at, at, at any rate, I don't think this is going to be a competitive card. Um, there's an Absol in here that I've seen people going crazy about. Cursed Eyes says, when you play this Pokémon from your hand onto your bench, you may move three damage counters from one of your opponent's Pokémon to another one of his or Pokémon. It's an interesting ability. Um, it seems pretty cool to move three damage counters around, but it's not really like Sinister Hand from Dust Noir, is it? I mean, Dust Noir, you can do that anytime you want, as much damage as you want. But Absol, it's three damage counters from one single Pokémon. All the damage have to come from one Pokémon and have to go to another Pokémon. If, if you did not have limit, I mean, if you could move three damage counters, like, from any Pokémon to any Pokémon, that would be amazing. I think that would be totally worth it. Like this, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's good because you can knock something out, but at the same time you're playing a Pokémon that's pretty useless into our bench, because Mechlaw is does 30 damage for 2 energy, and it's a, it isn't affected by resistance, but I don't really know what's resistant to darkness anyway, so yeah, it doesn't seem great. I don't want to spend uh, slots in my deck or in my bench for Absol. Chirashi, it's a pretty cute Pokémon. Uh, I'd love for this card to be playable. It has diminutive desire, so for a, um, a single Metal energy, you can look at the top seven cards of your deck and put one of them into our hand, shuffle the cards back into the deck. So that's cool. Yes, it's a cool setup card for metal decks. Unfortunately, it's not colorless, so you can't use them in any deck you want. But Doom Desire uh, says this card all energy attached to this Pokemon. The defending Pokemon is knocked out at the end of the opponent's turn. Well, this costs uh, metal and a colorless. So maybe in Night March decks with Mew EX, we could just use Metal Energy and then use Doom Desire, because this seems like a very good Seismic Toad counter, because if they don't use the... they don't switch, they don't use the, um, the scoop-ups and all that, they are going to get knocked out. And that's that's pretty amazing, but I guess if you're playing Metal Energy, you're better off just using Cobalion as a tech in the, in the Night March decks. Because Mew EX can attack with the Steel Energy anyway, so yeah, if you're playing Steel, I don't know. I think Jirashi can be a, an interesting setup card. Other than that, I don't really see it. Uh, there's a... okay, let's just look at the, this Togekiss uh, drawing, because I think it's pretty cool. Way better than the this one, although the, this card is way better. This one has uh, Delta Evolution, although the Togetic does not. Uh, I can spend a little time talking about that. Well, when the Stage 2 has the Delta Evolution and the Togetic does not, that means basically that you shouldn't be playing any rare candies in the deck. Because if you have them both in your hand at the same time, Togetic acts like the um, rare candy, but it's even better because you can go through Quaking Punch, so you just drop the Togetic instead of the rare candy and then evolve on the same turn. And if you don't have them in hand at the same time, like you do have to have with a rare candy, it doesn't matter, because you can just drop the Togetic and then later get the Togekiss and, and play it. So, Delta Evolution on the Stage 2 and not on the Stage 1, it's not as bad as as bad as it looks. It's way better than having than using the Rare Candy, so at least there's that going for it. Togekiss says, that there's an ability with, that's called Serene Grace and says, when you play this Pokémon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokémon, you may look at the top 8 cards of your deck, choose any basic energy cards you find there, and attach them to your Pokémon in any way you like. Shuffle the other cards back into the deck. So, you can use this outside of Fairy decks, obviously, you don't really need the attack, because it's Fairy Wind, it's 3 energy for 60 damage, so it sucks. But the, the ability seems pretty cool. I'd love to discard to see play, but uh, it's a it's a stage two, so yeah, it's it's hard. If it was if it was a stage one, I guess it would be way better. I, I'm still going to be play, trying to to build around Togekiss, but I don't have the <laughs> the greatest expectations around it. 
I don't really see it's going to be competitive, unfortunately. Okay, there's a Dragonite in here that has Max Wind. When you play this Pokémon from your hand, you basically heal all damage without discarding energy, so it's better than a Max Potion playing Dragonite down. Max Press is a is a not that great of a, an attack. It does 80 for 3 energy, and then you have to flip 2 coins in order to paralyze the opponent, so not that great. I guess if you're playing this dude, it's for Max Wind, and I don't think that's any reason to play a Stage 2 Pokémon. So once again, being a Stage 2 sucks. Uh, there's a Dragonite, another one in here that has the Delta Plus, so if you knock something out you take two prizes, and it does have heavy impact, so for 5 energy <laughs> you can deal 150 and take two prizes. I don't think that's great, uh, you have to play dub two double, call double Dragon energies, we'll get to the Double Dragon in a second, but it's a basically an energy that does uh, deal, that, uh, sorry, provides any type of energy type for dragons, so you have to use both. And I don't know, there was a Kingdra that was a stage 2 back in the last set, and it also dealt 150, and that wasn't seen play, so I don't think this is going to, even with a Delta Plus Ancient Trade, so unfortunately for that card. There's a Salamence in here, it's a stage 2 once again with a stage 2, but this one, uh, I, 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 I just wish we could play the Salamence, because if this was a stage 1, just for the first attack it would be playable, because for a single fire energy it does 60, and this card, and a Stadium card in play. I just wish this was on a stage one, and you didn't even need any of the other attacks just to play it as like a tech against decks that really relied around the stadiums, like to get rid of the Silent Labs, so you could play your Shamans, or to get rid of the um, the Stadium from Groudon, something like that. But as it is a stage two, I don't really see it. There's a Latios EX in here, which is kind of curious. Um, I am definitely going to try to build around this card. I think Light Pulse, the second attack, sucks, so I'm not even going to look into that. I mean, it takes 4 energy and does 110 damage, not great. But Fast Wraith, for a single um, Psychic Energy, it does 40 damage, and you can use this attack on your first turn. So it has a nice uh, damage output for a single energy, and you can use it on the first turn, so maybe this is another card that we could use on the um, Wobbuffet Bats deck and make it better, because that deck kind of lacks early game. Um, because before the uh, Wobbuffet, start sealing damage, you have to well, have dealt damage to the opponent's Pokémon, so maybe Latios EX is the thing, you play like a single one or two in there and you start dealing damage as soon as you as you start and sometimes you're going to be, have auto wins because you fast raid and you knock the sing the only op Pokémon that the opponent uh, is playing but other than that, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen too many times, so you have to actually want this guy in your deck in the other situations and I think having the fast damage output for the the Wobble Fat deck can work. I don't know. It's I'm definitely going to try to look into that. There's a Mega Latius EX in here. Sonic A seems pretty cool. You discard two energy cards attached to this book to energy, not cards. Uh, so you can use discard the double dragon. And uh, it deals 120 to, one, to any, any Pokemon on our opponent's side, so you can snipe anything. It's a mega Pokemon and it I don't think Megalatis is ever going to be the main attacker in a deck, right? And I don't really like uh, support attackers in the decks to be Mega Evolutions, because it's just too much work. If you are using a Mega Evolution, it has to be your main attacker, I feel like, uh, at least from the cards that we already have, so for it to be any good. If you're using a Mega just for a Pokémon that you sometimes do want, I don't think that's great. Uh, there's, a Mega, there's a Rayquaza EX in here that's Dragon-type, I don't think you're going to play this anywhere. If you're going to play the the other Dra Mega Rayquaza EX, the Dragon type, I think you use the Colorless Rayquaza anyway because it's just better. So Mega Rayquaza, EX, well, I guess uh, I, I can I actually take that back because there's support for Dragon type. Like you can play the Double Dragon Energy on Rayquaza EX, and maybe uh, yeah, maybe we do want that anyways. Yeah, but the other one is so much better. I mean, let's move forward. You'll you'll see what I mean when we get to the Colorless Rayquazas. So Mega Rayquaza EX, the Dragon type, has uh, Delta Wild, which means it's resistant to grass, fire, water, and lightning. So it has four resistance. That's pretty decent, I would say. And then Dragon Ascent does 300 damage. You discard two energy attached to this Pokémon. And you can discard the Dragon, of course. And it's five energies that you actually have to use to attack. I mean, you can get there with the support that we have for Dragon types with a Double Dragon and um, Reshiram, which we'll see in just a moment. So yeah, I guess this card can be quite a fun deck that knocks everything out in one hit, but 
competitively, I don't think we'll get there. I don't think this card will get there. If we're playing the Dragon deck, though, I Dragon EX does two very interesting things, both of which are pretty cool. The first one is Dragon Roar, Road. Um, basically takes the retreat cost off almost all our dragons. It reduces them to in two. So you'll definitely want I Dragon in your bench. And then it has Shred, which deals 80, and if the damage isn't affected by anything, by effects on the opponent's Pokémon, so it can deal with safeguard Pokémon, so it's two things that you really want in a deck thrown into a same Pokémon, so if you're playing the Dragon deck, High Dragon EX surely has a place in there. There's Reshiram, I already talked about this, and I think you're also going to need this if you're playing with a Mega Rayquaza EX, because if this guy is in active position, you can drop uh, an extra Fire Energy down into your Dragon Pokémon, so that's pretty cool. I think if you're playing the Dragon deck, you have to play Reshiram. It can actually go on the offensive, because right wing, it takes four, but if one of them is a double a double dragon, it only takes two turns to charge, because the next turn you drop like an extra fire and another energy. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you have to discard a fire energy, but you can just get it back. So potentially you can deal 110 damage with a non-EX attacker. Uh, Zekrom as a cool drawing, I guess. I don't really see anything else. It can charge up itself from the discard pile, so maybe it's a later game thing, but I uh, don't really see it. There's a Swallow in here that has the Delta Plus, so it takes extra prizes, and it attacks for colorless energy, so maybe you play this thing in the deck just to be a finisher, but it doesn't deal that much damage, keep that in mind, and it's a stage one, so yeah. There's an Altaria that has Delta Evolution, so you can evolve on the same turn, and this one is actually pretty cool, because it has an ability called Clear Arming. Each of your colorless Pokémon has no weakness. So this is definitely uh, useful in the Rayquaza decks that I'm going to be talking about. Uh, if you're playing a um, straight Rayquaza colorless deck, I guess you have to put Altaria in there, just because, you well, you want to fill your bench anyways, and Altair is just a nice thing to have. No weakness means um, the Manetrics are going to have a hard time, a harder time against you. I don't know if it's going to be that hard, though. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk about that later when I talk about the meta. Uh, let me just drink a little bit of water here, because I'm getting dry mouth. Okay, sorry about that. Um, Rayquaza EX, we finally are getting to the, the best cards in the, in the expansion, so... This dude, uh, it's it's a pretty cool Pokemon. I would argue it's you you even play this one in the Dragon type decks, although you can play the Dragon Double Dragon Energy on he, on it. Intensifying Burn for a single Colossus Energy, you deal 60 damage to EX Pokemon. That's an amazing uh, damage rate. If you drop a Muscle Band, that's 80 damage. That's pretty cool for a single Colossus Energy. Dragon Pulse does 100 damage. Not that bad either. You discard the top three cards of our deck. This, I think it's actually an upside on this day and age, because we have Lysand the Strom card to shuffle stuff back, and we have Via Seeker, so I think getting cards from the top of the deck to the discard pile is actually pretty cool. Um, so I think it's all upside with Rayquaza EX, the colorless one. And it evolves into one of the most amazing cards in the set, which is Mega Rayquaza EX, the colorless one. It has Delta Evolution, so you can evolve on the same turn that you play the basic Pokémon. That's pretty cool, I mean... You can do that on the first turn, even if you don't have the Spirit Link, I don't even care. I mean, you just evolve and pass the turn without attacking. It doesn't matter, because Mega Rayquaz EX, the, the following turn, is going to you be using Emerald Break, which has the potential to one-hit knockout almost everything in the, in the game. Emerald Break says 3 colorless energy, does 30 damage, times the number of, bench, of your, your benched Pokémon. So, if you have a full bench of 5 Pokémon, that's 150. And I think I'm going to jump to the stadium right now. If you have Skyfield out, you can have 8 Pokémon on your bench. So 8 times 3, that's 240 damage. So you can knock out mostly anything. Uh, and that's the dream scenario, right? You On the, f the first turn... Yeah, let let's talk about the support for Mega Rayquaza right now, because it's one of the... the the most important things in the deck, in the expansion, sorry, if not the most important thing in the expansion. They threw in some pretty cool supporter for this card, like the Mega Turbo, which reads, attach a basic energy card from this card pile to one of your Mega Evolution Pokémon. This is an item card, I mean, pretty insane, right? And there's, of, of course, there's a Spirit Link for Rayquaza, 
And then there's Shaming EX, which has setup that says when you play this Pokémon from your hand onto your bench, you may draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. This card is insane! I'll get to that in a second. I'm just looking at it through the eyes of a Mega Rayquaza EX player. So if you're going first, you put a Rayquaza EX down. Then you put the Spirit Link on it. You evolve without losing your turn and without evolution, because you can do that on the first turn. You drop a double colorless energy. You discard your hand or uh, an energy with a, an Ultra Ball, for example. And then you use Mega Turbo to put that third energy on the Mega Rayquaza. And suddenly you're set up. And then you just play Shamans and <laughs> you draw a lot of cards and you put everything, every Pokemon that you have on your bench. And you can potentially be hitting 240 damage on the first turn if you're going second. That's pretty amazing, and people are saying, yeah, yeah, that's a dream scenario, and I totally agree with that. I think that's a dream scenario that won't be happening much, but at the same time, you don't really need the dream scenario, do you? I mean, that just proves that this Pokemon is really easy to set up, and I don't, yeah, in my personal opinion, I have to be honest, I don't think you're going to be seeing the Mega Rayquaza EX uh, dedicated decks. This guy is a colorless Pokemon, it's easy to splash other stuff in here, like, I don't know, Seismetodes, Manatrix, you can play your own Manatrix, Ivoltol, I know they, they have the same weakness, but you can play Ivoltols in here and Dark Rise and all that. You can play Landra CX if you're scared of Manatrix, so you can hit them back for weakness. I mean, it's a colorless Pokemon, so you can play <laughs> all sorts of stuff with it, so I don't, I, don't, I don't really feel like the perfect dream scenario of Skyfield with Mega Rayquaza AX is going to be it. Um, but even so, the fact that it's really consistent in the damage output, it can knock out stuff into hits really, really consistently. And that's what I think makes this card really, really powerful. Uh, we'll get to... if I... yeah, I, I'm going to talk about the, um, the format in a little bit, so I'll just let uh, Mega Rayquaza for now. Let's talk about what I think is going to be the best card in the format. In, uh, not in the format, at least. In the, in the expansion. Potentially in the format, I guess. <laughs> I can see it totally. Shamini X. The ability setup reads when you play this Pokemon from your card, your hand onto your bench. You may draw cards until you have six cards in your hand. So it's basically insane. It's Pokemon-based draw, draw. So you don't need those many supporter cards if you have Shamini X in your deck. I think this is going to see play in all sorts of decks, especially after g -Rush EX rotates out. Uh, it even has Sky Return, so it deals damage, 30 damage, and you return it and all cards attached to it to your hand, so you can set up the next turn again. Um, one cool thing about Shamini X is that, yeah, it's really, really good card, one of the, probably the best card. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, I think it's the best card in the set, not even close. Uh, I'm going to play this in <laughs> pretty much any deck I, I find it. Um, some considerations. I, when the best card in the deck is also one of the most uh, cool, uh, in one of the coolest uh, for crazy decks. I'm thinking about Shamini X with Trevenant, and you attack with Shamin and bring it to your hand, and then play it again next turn to your setup, and you have a, a, the Trevenant in there at the act, in the active position, so that the opponent cannot be playing items. I think that's pretty cool. I'm definitely going to build that deck. So <laughs> this card not only is an amazing competitive card, it's also pretty cool to build around for crazy decks. So Shamini X, I think it's really going to be good. Um, there's also an Unpheasant here. I, I, I kind of... I'm highlighting this card because I think it's really goofy. You have Delta Evolution, doesn't really matter that much because the previous, the stage one does not have it. Feather Dance means the next turn's attack does 80, damage, 80 extra damage, so it's 200 damage. But then you look at Sky Attack and flip a coin if deals this attack does nothing. So <laughs> the first attack sets up the second, but the second can <laughs> screw itself up. Mega Turbo, already, already talked a little bit about the card, but I'm going to talk about it again, I don't care. It charges up any Mega Evolution Pokémon, so you can charge up your Mega Manatrix, you can charge up your Mega Lucario, maybe this makes, sorry, Mega Lucario playable. And there's also Mega Absol, which is going to come later in this year, and Mega Turbo is going to be seeing play there, so this is my pick for second best card in the set. The third pick is going to be Mega Rayquaza, so Shaman, um, Turbo and Mega Rayquaza. I'll get to that. I'll talk about that a little bit uh, more in a second when I talk about the meta. Revive. This is um, a reprint. 
put a basic Pokémon from your discard pile onto your bench. I think this card is pretty amazing. You can play it on um, Night March decks when the Mew EX rotates out. I'm really happy Revive is here because you can bring attackers back from your discard pile. So I don't think the um, the Night March deck is going to die when Mew EX rotates. I just think you can replace them with Revives and that's it. Skyfield already talked about it. I don't really see any uh, upside other than charging up the Mega Rayquaza EX. I guess there are other Pokémon that benefit from it, but um, yeah. Potential, it has potential for combo, de combo decks, so yeah, I like Skyfield. Uh, what else? We have Trainer's Mail. You look at the top four cards of your deck, you may reveal a Trainer card. Mind you, it's any Trainer. It can be an item, a stadium, or a supporter, and you put it into your hand. I think that's pretty cool for speed decks. You can find Acrobike with it, and you can find a support if you really need that, so I think Trainer's Mail is going to see some play in the speed decks. There's Wally. It's a nice supporter. It's basically Evil Soda, but you can use it on the same turn that you play the basic Pokémon. That's what makes this card. I can see this as a two-off uh, in decks with evolutions, like uh, Aromatist decks and all that. Um, I'm going to try it out, at least. Uh, it has a lot of potential. I don't really know if it's going to be that great, but... Oh yeah, you can't use it to evolve EX Pokémon. So yeah, you can't really do the Mega Evolutions with Wally, -E, but you can uh, use, use it for Aromatist decks, at least. Um, or to grab, uh, I don't know, the slurp of So maybe this card actually makes the, um, the stage 2 playables. I don't know. I'll definitely try it out. There's Wynona, another supporter. Pretty cool. At first I thought I, this was only going to see play in the colorless uh, decks, like the Mega Rayquaza one, dedicated Mega Rayquaza deck, because it only grab, it grabs three Pokémon, but it's colorless Pokémon. But actually, if you're playing a deck, I don't know, with four Shaman, which might be possible in the, in the future, I think you show you, you play two Winona in there, because you can just play it on a first turn and grab three Shaman, and you have all the draw, draw that you need for the, the rest of the game. So I think Winona has a lot of potential, even if you're not, if it's stuck in hand in the later stages of the game, just because you got three Shamans out of the first one, it's, it's pretty amazing. So definitely see this card being played in paired with Shamans. If you're not playing Shaman in the deck, I don't think Wynona is a, your girl, so... Double Dragon Energy. I really like the name of this card, and I really like the card. It's pretty strong. It adds two uh, energy, uh, any type of energy, actually, to your Dragon Pokémon. It can only be played on a Dragon Pokémon. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Makes Dragon Pokémon actually playable. Uh, if you're playing this in the Mega Rayquaza deck, I guess you have to play it. But I'm actually going to be looking at the older dragons, potentially in Expanded also, and see if we can find another home for Double Dragon Energy. Uh, and that's it, that's the deck. The other cards here are um, Full Arts. The Shaman is really cool, really nice drawing. I also love this type of drawing, as you guys know, I already said that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to say a few words on the... Um, the state of the format after this set comes out, so Mega Rayquaza seems playable, people are definitely going to try it out. Unfortunately, there's something called Seismetoad, and Seismetoad is still out, and Seismetoad is going to be better just because Mega Turbo is out, so Seismetoad knocks, makes it so that the opponent cannot play Mega Turbo, and if you're playing Hammers, you're take, you're, and your Mega Rayquaza has, uh, needs three energy to attack, I don't think it's going to attack a lot of times. I mean, if it does, it kills the Seismetal potentially in one hit, but I don't know. I mean, I really think Mega Rayquaza is not going to be the thing that destroys Seismetal Vex. Potentially, the rotation is going to take care of that because it takes the lasers out, but at that point, you still have the Muscle Bands and you have the, the Rough Seas, so... Yeah, I don't really know. I think Mega Rayquaza X has, definitely has the potential to be playable, especially in decks with other types of Pokémon, not just dedicated colorless decks, but I think it's going to need um, Seismetoad counter in there. That's my my prediction for the format. Other prediction is Shaman X. It's going to be insane, but it's going to make Silent Lab a staple also, because Silent Lab just puts a dent on the Shaman X. You're, you're either going to be a deck that plays Shaman X and or you're going to be a deck that does not play Shaman EX and, plays, and you have to play Silent Lab at that point, because yeah, it's going to change things a little bit, because you either have the slots in your deck for Shaman, 
or you just go with a silent lab and I don't know it's going to make silent labs a lot better although obviously you, you can also play your own stadiums and trump their silent labs and then play shaman so yeah I guess uh, that doesn't stop shaman ex at all uh, but it does slow it down a lot so I guess that does make silent lab a little bit better it also makes uh, Gar uh, Garboder a little bit better until it comes out, uh, at least until uh, Garboder rotates out. So maybe Seismato decks with Garboder are the bane of the Mega Rayquaza EX, Shaman EX decks. Uh, either way, these are pretty impressive cards that I think will definitely some see some play. So that's my, my uh, predictions for the format. Once again, Mega Turbo also insane, insanely good for the Mega Manetric decks and for the maybe Mega Lucario. I'd love to see Mega Lucario uh, be playable. Mega Turbo can play a role in that. And even with the, the Primal Groudon, uh, because it's also Mega Evolution, you can use Mega Turbo to charge it up. Yeah, it's actually, I don't know why I didn't mention that before, because it's actually one of the cards that, cards that benefit the most out of Mega Turbo. So my three favorite cards, I, I will actually do something, which is when the next set comes out, when I do my review, I'll actually look back into this and see if the cards that I like actually turned out to be any good. And yeah, we'll reevaluate. So my picks for best cards of the, for, of the set are Shamini X first, then it's Mega Turbo, and then it's Rayquaza X at the third position. So uh, I... There's a lot of other cards that I like, but I don't. I don't really like to order them. Um, you can just look at. I, I'll just pick the third, the three best, and we'll look into this again when the next set comes out. That's a promise. So I hope you guys enjoy this, uh, and tell me what you think. What your what your opinions are on the comments below. Did I miss any cards? Did I overvalue or undervalue anything here? Tell me what you guys think, uh, and see you guys next time. Bye.